So, as was stated, my name is Mirek Erosh. I am working at Red Hat as a principal software quality engineer. And today, first of all, let me tell you, I am not the best speaker. So it's good that this is the last session for today because you won't get too much angry with me, which is good. Uh, second of all, this, will, this won't be a typical deep dive talk. It will be more about our experience where, uh, once we've started to be uh, researchers in our company. So it will be more about what we did face when we've been researching this topic and how it worked for us. So if you were hoping for a deep dive, I must disappoint you. So, what was the story? Uh, so, it was 2017, so something like five years ago. Uh, we've been in Red Hat playing a bit with IoT tools and stuff, and we've, we got into a talk with Czech Technical University with the software testing lab and we decided that we want to start some kind of research project uh, where we as a Red Hat would be somehow responsible for the technical part and Czech Technical University would be responsible for the methodological part. We decided to dig dive into the IoT topic because at the time, as it still is, it was a huge topic with unknown variables and a little uh, covered in the research papers so we've decided that's our way to go. Uh, we started in 2017. It was a project that we've got grant for from Czech uh, Agency of Technology. And we started the research. So we became researchers. OK, how do you start the research? Well, you ask questions. So we try to ask ourselves a question. What is an IoT application? Not an easy answer to it. Then we try to ask, how would I deploy an IoT uh, application? Again, not an easy question to answer. What, what is the communication method you use there? Uh, how should we test it if we want to test it? What, what would be some kind of common ground? Uh, how could we effectively describe it, or how could we describe the test scenario in such an environment, etc., etc. So we, every time we've asked a question, we only discovered new, uh, new, more new questions to ask ourselves. So once we got all the questions we got, mm -hmm. we moved to the research part. So, we've read over 800 research papers in the first year. Uh, it raised more questions. We analyzed some topologies that were described there. We reviewed the communication methods that are used in IoT. And we have wrote a specification, something like 100 pages long. And this was, these were our findings. So, IoT is vaguely defined. Well, you got, if you would try to define IoT, you would get to the problems like, okay, so what does it mean, Internet of Things? We know that it means we have some devices that produce some data that are collected and that are somehow managed, uh, analyzed, etc. But what are those data in nature? Where do you get them? Who provides them? In some applications, the IoT means we have devices that are connected directly to the internet, so they know who they are going to communicate with, and they are sending their data. But then you have solutions where nothing as such is. You have uh, mesh networks where everything com communicates with everything. Like in factories, you have... Um, wireless sensor networks where you use small or low power devices that build their own network as they are running and then from this network which is not TCP IP generally 
the data are somehow sent back to some data store or to some um, uh, to some gateway, which then decides what to do with those. What we found out, even though we weren't so much uh, able to um, define strictly what technologies are used in IoT, what we found out was that there is always some kind of central part. There is always some place where the data are going, where they, where they are uh, processed and where the decision making happens. And this is the part we can test in, in a software way. Because for the physical world, the testing is quite hard. You will uh, in general end up with a solution tailored for your purpose. But for the data center part or for the decision making part, for the gateways, you can write out a general test, but you need some tools that will allow you to describe the real world. So, as a part of research, we've tried to design su such a thing, only in concept, and we over-engineer it. This is the definition of some modules that we would use while developing and what we would need. It's mess, uh, it's heavy, and there are a lot of stuff to do. So, we've ended up with creating a framework. We call it Patriot Framework. Not much about patriotism, but about the IoT in the name, right? So, we got a name, which was a good start. Then we got to implement it. So, in the end, we reduced the number of components needed to basically three. So, our architecture design or decisions that went into design. What do we need to test an IoT application? So, we need something that produces data, which are somehow, which can be different, like temperature measurements, humidity measurements, information of RFID uh, tag that's going through some path, GPS coordinates. We need it to somehow encapsulate such thing that would generate the, the data into something that looks like network and that has the problems of network, like instabilities, uh, latency, etc. And then we needed something to cover it to provide some APIs for integration testing. This is what we end up with. Basically, three components. If you compare it to the previous, um, previous image, it's very much more concrete and less complicated. So, we have, right now, in the Patriot, we have three components. We do have some core API, which is based on JUnit 5. That's a Java library. Some of you probably know it. Um, it provides the APIs for the rest of the system, as well as some facilities to enable integration testing, like conditional skipping of tests uh, and some partial ordering of tests, if you need those. Uh, we do have the network simulator part, which is right now implemented for two platforms. It's for Docker and for Kubernetes. The Docker part, it's the older one. Basically, the Patriot framework expects that you have some Docker machine available for it to manage it, or machine with Docker daemon, and then it deploys anything you need, especially the uh, generators of data into it, and it can interrupt anything within this network. Like it can create uh, virtual obstacles for data packets to go through, or it can reroute the traffic throughout the vir virtual networks, etc. And then there's the last part, there is a data generator, which is a component that allows you to define 
the data you want to produce for your solution, for your system under test. So let's say you want to simulate a thermometer. So you do know that there is some distribution of the data that are going to be produced by thermometer and the data generator. And you can describe this distribution for the data generator, then encapsulate it into some kind of a network protocol, which will then produce it for your application. So, how our research ended, basically. So I've described how we got to a place where we got some solution. As the final phase in our research project, we expected that we will get to a pilot phase. So we will deploy our solution at some, for some customer so they can test their, um, their whatever, software or um, product. But the project ended in the year 2020, which meant that we got hit by a corona pandemic. So in the end, nobody wanted to be friends with us. Um, from like five pilot runs, we got to none, which was a shame. And it in the end means that we haven't got a chance to properly try it in the field. Uh, which means that the software is probably buggy. I know it sounds bad, but you know, this is a part of software development. You, unless you have a customer, you are writing for you into the table, right? So you don't know how, what, or you can't think if you are a developer about everything or how all the possibilities that can be, can your solution be put uh, onto. So we finished the project successfully, but without a pilot run. And this is the end. Well, not entirely. We are still continuing with the research, or not as a research project, but the project still lives on. We do still open an internship, internship positions for it, and there is still development. We still continue with bachelor and diploma thesis. So if anyone here would be interested in having a bachelor or diploma thesis for themselves in this field, uh, I would welcome you. So that's basically everything from me. And now I think we can get to the questions. Could you please rephrase the question in a way I could repeat it? <laughs> sorry, 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 but I, 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 got, I got what you mean, but... <laughs> Yep. Right. So basically, we, yeah, yeah. So I repeat the question. So what is the what is the uh, sorry? <laughs> sorry, a little bit of uh, understands. But yeah, uh, how would any new protocol impact our solution? Right. So if there is a new standardized protocol, how it would impact our solution? And the and the answer is not that much. Like right now, in the current state, we do have only a handful of protocols implemented. And if there is any other, you can implement it yourself. So you can edit the solution itself or the Patriot framework will not, will, uh, it's open to extensions. So you, if you would have some definition of the network protocol or some Java library that is able to use it, 
then you can just wrap, wrap the data generator into it and use it in the, in the network generator. It would be possible. Also, if you would find out, find out that it would make sense to have it as a part of the tool set in Patriot Framework, you could try to ask us if we would implement it, or you could uh, propose a pull request yourself. Thank you.